chat short, but we'll be going to the pub after this, so you can carry on. Um, right, our final speaker tonight is Matt Finch, who's going to talk a bit about techs. Thank you. Always present with a beer. Right, so. So yeah, TEQS, T -E -Q -S, TEQS, Tradable Energy Quotas, what they're for. There are four uh, distinct, different, but interrelated problems that we're facing. You all know, number one, climate change is pretty obvious. Um, but there's actually legal obligations that we, the UK, have to adhere to. <coughs> um, various EU directives. The one I'll discuss a bit more is uh, the EU Renewables Directive. Um, you might know this, it states that we need to obtain 15% of our energy from renewables by 2020. Uh, that's touch and go if we're going to hit that target. Um, just for your information, Germany's target is 30%, France's is 23 Italy's is 17 Spain is 20 and they're our comparable nations. Um, France and Germany are going to smash their targets, uh, we're probably not. Second one is the Climate Change Act 2008. Um, that mandates the UK to achieve 34% reductions uh, on uh, carbon emissions by uh, 2020 and 80% by 2050. Are we going to achieve that? Most people are saying no. Um, I noticed we've got a couple of people from Friends of the Earth in. They can probably speak more than, more than me on this. <laughs> so um, the chances are we won't get there. Um, there's also resource depletion, peak oil, peak export oil, um, probably don't need that much explaining. Suffice to say that the UK is gradually running out of its own natural resources. We're more and more reliant on imported energy. As recently as 2005, we didn't need to import any energy. Now uh, we only export natural gas, everything else we are net importers of. Um, and if you're uh, in the army or the navy, you see the security uh, implications of that. Um, if we're reliant on, for instance, Kazakhstan for our uranium, for our nuclear power, that's pretty bad. So what are TEX? TEX is a potential solution to this. It's not obviously the only solution, um, but it is an electronic system for rationing carbon-rated energy at a national level for all energy users. A um, couple of important things in there. This isn't a uh, voluntary scheme. If you are an individual or a business or the government in, in a nation in the UK, then you are in this scheme by definition. Um, if you choose to ignore it, then you'll be penalised later on financially. Um, so, how it works. <coughs> units, are sur units are surrendered in addition... You receive units. So units are surrendered in addition to cash every time fuel energy is purchased. All individuals receive an equal per capita entitlement um, of tax units. All other users, and that's obviously business and government, receive their units through a weekly tender, a weekly auction. That already, is, already exists at the moment uh, through the government debt, bond, and guilt auction that happens every week in the city. Um, individuals who use less than their entitlement may sell them. Individuals who need more can buy them. The price is set by supply and demand. It's a market-based system. So, <coughs> excuse me. The current method that we we favour, uh, or is used, I should say, is either supply-side financial incentives or a carbon tax. Carbon tax obviously leads to a bit of a paradox where you've seen in the media recently all about energy prices. Uh, the government wants energy prices to be as low as possible whilst wanting carbon prices to be as high as possible. If carbon prices are energy prices, well, there you go. Unsurprisingly, carbon taxes have proved unpopular. Uh, instead, rather than specify any resource depletion scheme in, in financial terms, we argue that you should just do the, uh, the, do the scheme in terms of resource depletion. 
i.e. entitlements to, to emitting carbon as opposed to financial entitlements. So that's the scheme, that's the framework. It's a bit daunting to look at, um, so I'll break it down step by step. So we in the UK have a committee on climate change. Um, they exist, they're there, everyone knows about them. Um, they are crucially independent to the government. So they would then set the carbon budget. They would then decide where we need to get to by what date. Again, using the Climate Change Act, that makes a lot of sense. So by 2050, we need to get 80% reductions on previous levels. <coughs> um, they then, is this coming up? Oh, sorry. Separate to the, to the, climate, the Committee on Climate Change, there is a body we've called Quotaco. It could be a public body, it could be a private body. It's up to the government of the day how they decide to, to set this body up. But they then issue the uh, units into the system. 40% go to individuals. And so those 40% are an equal per capita basis. I get the same as you, you get the same as David Beckham, David Beckham gets the same as James. 60% go into auction each week. And like I say, it, it's done weekly, so there's no massive price point around a, a month or a year. <coughs> yep, just explain that. So. so the units are rated in terms of their carbon amount, the amount of carbon, or the amount of greenhouse gases, I should say, um, that they emit into the atmosphere. So burning a tonne of coal emits a certain amount of carbon into the atmosphere but gives a certain amount of energy into the system, that is then tracked through the system. You don't have to do it in terms of CO2. You can, you can tweak the math slightly and make one unit equal one litre of oil or one unit equal one metre cubed of gas. So, Crucially, um, it will mean that you'll see straight away which are the, the higher carbon types of energy. Coal right up there. Renewables right at the bottom. So. The, this then becomes a market. <coughs> this market, excuse me. Um, this market is done. It, it's is one weekly price. One one set price, I should say. Sorry. Um, the price is determined by supply and demand. The system is, you can only sell back to the system. You can't sell to each other. There's not tax units on eBay, or, or you, you can't go to the shops and, and steal the units from someone. There's one price, so you choose if you want to sell or you want to buy. It's up to you if you want to buy, but obviously every time you uh, use energy, you have to surrender your units. So you should know how much energy you're using at any one point to know if you're going to need more or, or need less, and therefore whether you're going to buy. Everyone has access to the same market. Uh, there we go. So, units, this is the point that a lot of people don't really understand. Units flow through the energy cycle. So, this company at the top, Quotaco. Quotaco don't monitor what happens to units after they're issued. What Quotaco do check is how much they're receiving back from the main extractors and importers of energy, whatever they may be. So Quotaco will deal directly with coal pits or nuclear power stations. They won't deal with Tesco's. Or if, if Tesco needs to uh, buy units, it just does it. Um, as a result, this system becomes self-regulated. Uh, and that's, that's crucial because that reduces the cost down quite a lot further down the scheme. All that seems quite complicated, but in essence, once it's all set up, it's actually quite a hands-free uh, scheme. It's a bit like the oyster system is at the moment. The oyster, the technical details of, the, of an oyster card system is quite complicated, but for me and you, we just touch on, touch off and don't even think about it. So, you, you would surrender units 12 times a year on your utility bills, every time you buy petrol. If you don't have any units on your card, uh, your, your account is linked to your debit card, you just pay for cash, pay for it in cash. So. Uh, 
bit of talk about embodied energy. I know Tom, I think he's gone now, briefly mentioned this. There's no need to, to count how much embodied, embodied energy there is in the goods that you're buying. Um, reason for that is the, the company that make a, a table, for instance, has already had to purchase its tech units to, uh, to emit that energy. So. so that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Everyone remember that for later? <laughs> I'll briefly run through the key benefits of the scheme. We've got oh, two minutes left, so. So, it guarantees, where am I? It, let, me, let me put a few of these up. So, it, it provides a guarantee for everyone, um, crucially for the government, as to how we're gonna hit our targets. This 80% reduction is by 2050. It would enable the UK government to go into climate talks, Warsaw at the moment, but you've seen the mess that Copenhagen and Cancun were, and say, look, this is the scheme we're using, this is how we're getting there, how are you guys going to do it? It allows businesses time to plan ahead. And um, that's, for, for business, that's, that's a certainty that they need. Um, businesses would rather have, and the CBI will, will prove this, would rather say, if we know how much we've got to pay out, that's more than having having the uncertainty of not knowing if we're going to pay or not. So, um, it leaves money with the end user. This is the only scheme where the end user decides how they reduce their, their carbon. Could, uh, one individual may decide to install solar panels on their house, the next may insulate their house, the third may give up driving a petrol car, etc., etc. It's up to the users how they do it. And if a user doesn't do it, as the number of tax units issued to them decreases, the price that they're going to pay for energy just keeps on going up and up and up. So either they're very rich or very stupid. It's a progressive scheme. Um, it's, it provides an assured ration of energy. And as I mentioned earlier, it's specified in terms of energy. It's not a financial scheme, this. It's, it's specified in terms of the amount of energy or the amount of uh, carbon and greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere. The tax price, the tax unit that goes up and down, is actually not anything to do with the government. It's set purely by, or I've been told to wind up, set purely by, um, by the market. Uh, climate, bottom up. The government is there to help in this scheme. The government has to buy units as well, and government has to reduce its own energy consumption. So it, it's, it's on the same side as you. Com it, would com it would provide a competitive advantage to uh, a nation that's doing this, purely because the energy consumption of that nation would start dropping, or the net uh, ex imported energy would start dropping. Um, moral leadership is, is the same as the guarantee, and it would provide a sense of common purpose. This, right, so the next one, this scheme, <coughs> You think this scheme is, is just a dream, but actually it's been floating around the House of Parliament for about six or seven years now. Uh, the scheme was actually championed by David Miliband, but as Tom mentioned earlier, unfortunately he got promoted uh, to the Foreign Office where he could do nothing on environmental policy. Um, but this was he, was, he was the champion of this scheme. Um, it's dropped slightly since then, but there are around 50 MPs of a broad cross-party consensus who've put their name to the scheme. Unfortunately, most of them aren't conservative, so there's not much we can do at the moment. Um, the only party who it's, it's definite policy is the Green Party, but you, you kind of expect that. So, that's, that's text, that's tradable energy quotas. Uh, I'll read this out just in case you can't see it. An equitable, effective, and efficient way of managing our country's energy scent, guaranteeing emission reductions, empowering families, companies and communities and ensuring fair access to fuel and energy for all. Thank you very much. <laughs>